Hello everybody, uh, tonight we have a really awesome discussion on the Philippines. Uh, I've been kind of holding off uh, on my discussions, particularly in Southeast Asia and Oceania, um, because the complexity of the topic. Um, it really takes a knowledge both of most of China, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore. It takes a whole lot of knowledge um, just before you even get out into the ocean because there's so many different islands and details and the cultures become very complex, um, essentially because each island has its own unique culture, uh, unique geology and unique uh, fish and biology and everything. So uh, it, it's basically one of the most important and complicated topics uh, also for uh, keeping the peace on the planet uh, with the wildlife. Um, so it turns out um, that um, of the two topics, uh, Philippines is a little bit different conversation uh, than Indonesia. And actually, Indonesia has a lot more land um, and is working on some stuff that's even more questionable um, than what the Philippines is working on in terms of hurting the environment uh, and pollution in the ocean. So it's really a combination. But because the Philippines is growing so fast, um, on a population, from a population perspective, um, you'll notice, let's go to a population map here and you can kind of see what's going on. So basically, uh, the Philippines is really filling up very quickly. Um, and it all started in here in Manila and basically it's going all the way down even into the South Island. So actually the South Island, although the people uh, in Manila would say, hey, we're growing really fast. It actually may be the southernmost island and these middle islands, actually, that are really growing the fastest. Uh, some of the reason for that is poverty and just the raw pressure of population uh, in Manila. So basically what happens is that people, um, from what I understand, it's actually not super safe uh, in Manila. There is a lot of housing projects uh, and just difficult situations going on. So a lot of people are going to other islands, and that's basically kind of spread out all throughout the Philippines with the exception of Cebu and some other small islands in between uh, basically Indonesia. And you can see um, that that's basically pretty different. Then what you see in Borneo, Borneo you see it pretty much only around the edges of the island, whereas here in the Philippines it's pretty much all throughout. Uh, the population is pretty, very significant um, there. And then you can also see from a farming perspective the southern island is really where the farming is, so that's one of the reasons why the population is moving so far south, uh, as well as these middle islands, a lot of that is becoming fishing. So it becomes a question of why they're doing all this extra fishing in the ocean there, um, and that could be a very important topic. Um, here's a, all the airports, so there is quite a number of airports on all these islands, and actually that's kind of the de facto way to get around. A lot of people are not taking boats, they do have high-speed boats. Uh, they go to and from the close islands and Manila here, um, but as you get further and further out, it becomes uh, just difficult to do that by boat. Um, so, and again, you can see the population for all of Southeast Asia. Of course, India is a big factor here, Hanoi, and then Vietnam, actually. And actually, to some extent, um, you would have to argue that Vietnam is actually more responsible for what's been going on in the Philippines than even Thailand or Singapore. So a lot of that is actually coming from Taiwan as well and Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, um, and basically making this a very heavy, uh, very important place for technology. You'll see approximately 50% of all the exports of the Philippines is actually from technology related. I'm gonna have the chat open in case anybody has some questions on what they're trying to do. If you're trying to look for some work, I highly recommend uh, the Philippines um, primarily because uh, essentially there's so much going on there um, and there's a lot of need for um, people from around the world there and they also speak English, which is a great factor. Um, I have a number of different maps. I didn't use all of them. One of them that I didn't look at is the Earth at Night map and I really regret that now. Um, but on this webpage, you can see um, there's basically almost a hundred or so maps uh, that you can use. And then some of these other links have even thought you can get up to maybe thousands of different types of maps using just that one page. Um, but we're gonna go through all these maps really quickly. So basically when we look at Southeast Asia or Oceania, as I call it, um, basically it all started uh, in mainland China perhaps. 
um, and then spread down to Hanoi, and then from Hanoi, it basically crossed over, and then some of that actually was from... Uh, people don't realize how important uh, the proximity is to Taiwan. So the question with uh, Taiwan uh, and China and also uh, Shanghai being so close here to the Philippines. Um, so a lot of these flights to and from Manila, um, basically you end up here in Manila and then you may have to just take another flight somewhere else um, if you're worried about the safety factor in uh, Manila. Uh, so it's actually one of the more questionable places in all of Southeast Asia. Um, because there's so many remote islands, it's difficult for them to do with security problems and other things. Um, and we're going to go look into some of the river systems here. Here's kind of the main system here. You can see that these rivers are not nearly as big as the ones that you get in mainland, um, but there are some very important rivers that need to be thought about. And because there's so few rivers, it means that the pollution and keeping them clean is extra important in the Philippines, uh, especially so they can actually monitor uh, the water cleanliness uh, very carefully in the Philippines, which actually makes it a very great case study because there's so few major rivers um, to work on. And if you are in the main island here up in Manila, um, this basically northern river here and this whole area here is basically pretty farmed out. So it's basically a great situation. Uh, some of the best rice producers in the world, they have the World Rice Conference um, and they do all these uh, fancy uh, rice dishes and you can basically check that out. That'd be definitely a way to start to look at how they're doing that. So I'm going to jump right into the uh, details of what we discussed here. Um, I'm going to look at the population first. Um, so in Manila, let's look at the whole Southeast Asia first here see if we can get this on a reasonable map uh, for everybody to see here. Sorry about this, it's taking a little bit. So you basically have each of these sections are actually very different populations. This main island actually goes quite far out, um, but there's actually maybe three peripheral areas here on that main island and then the main area, excuse me, being Manila. Um, this green area I would say is very important because it basically gets into fishing populations. Uh, and then there's these further islands here. Um, that also have their own unique populations, and then Davao City down here on the southern island. Um, so the population map is a great way to start. I wanted to look at the deforestation map so you can see basically what's happened. So it's basically been almost entirely deforested all of the Philippines, which is really kind of a scary uh, thing to think about uh, when you look at all of this here. Um, and then the soil map kind of gives you some ideas of where the best farmland is. So essentially that's why a lot of this is moving to the south. And I really hope that they can not do, I'm a vegetarian personally, um, but honestly it would be awesome to see more farming um, and less fishing. So working on the southern part here would be very important and vital to what's going on. Here's a detailed imagery of the population in Manila and you can definitely get into the studying this. And a lot of it actually has to do with earthquakes and volcanoes. There was a recent volcano, major volcanic explosion. I don't know if you watched the news about Philippines, but that was a pretty big deal. And the electrical circuitry all comes out of Manila. So they actually trace it all throughout the islands. It's one continuous circuit almost. So going through everything. So it kind of comes through here. Um, it might be a little bit easier to see that on the other map. Let's see if we can get that on the infrastructure here. So on this, you can kind of see how this works. Basically, the power generators are all here in Manila. Um, and we'll trace that down through here. I can see if I can get telecoms and that here. So you can see basically how this all works um, from a Manila perspective. And some of that, they can't really do hydroelectric here. So there's certain locations that they maybe could do hydroelectric. Um, but um, there's not a whole lot of opportunities for that because the rivers are not that big. Um, but you can see essentially this is how the electrical works. So this being a very important crossing here and then basically getting to the South Island of the Philippines. Um, and then let's relook at that population map just so you can see how detailed this is. And I really love all the details in this. It takes a little bit while to load, unfortunately, because it is so detailed, but you can see just the footprint of the people all throughout the Philippines is really important to see. And you can see that right in here is actually the most important transition, right? You're basically heading from the main city, Manila, 
out into further into the islands as well as this island here. So controlling the population and kind of working with the biodiversity really starts with this island here as well as the southern part of this main island heading into Manila. Um, and then you have all this other population and then Cebu City. And actually a lot of people are just flying directly to Cebu City because it's basically a metropolis here in Manila and it becomes more of a beach town, beaches, areas out in the southern Philippines, meaning more tourism money in the southern part now, unlike in the past. So in the past, there was probably more tourism dollars um, from the main island up here in the north. Uh, and there's actually really beautiful rice terraces and different things like we talked about before. Um, but exploring this population map can definitely help you clearly understand everything about the Philippines. And I definitely highly recommend taking a careful look at this population map if you're thinking about visiting the Philippines or working with people in the Philippines. Let me go to this map here. So this is another really good map to see um, how it's going in downtown Manila. You have to change this to typical traffic to get this map. Um, so you can pick the typical, there's live traffic and then typical traffic. Typical traffic gives you kind of an average so you can see where the bad traffic zones are. And it's just basically becoming difficult um, getting to and from the airport. Um, there's actually, I've tried to trace how to get to the airport. And it's just really complicated um, from the airport. There should be a better public transportation system um, to get to downtown and to other areas. And it's actually just kind of dangerous in many parts of Manila. So it's getting to be difficult there. Anyway, um, on to the next topic here. Um, so as we look around uh, flying in and out, most of that air traffic is indeed into Manila. And then there's actually a whole set of airports all heading down into the South Islands, as well as kind of these front islands and these back islands on the Cebu Island here. And then the soil map is very helpful to look at so you can kind of see some of the biodiversity. So if you're interested in the biodiversity <clears throat> on land, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, wow. Um, a lot of that starts with uh, the types of soil and the rock. And because it's so volcanic in this area, um, there are a lot of earthquakes um, and <coughs> volcanoes, so you have to be careful um, about everything in the Philippines, actually. Um, that's just one reason why uh, Manila building all these new skyscrapers is kind of questionable because it could be very disastrous, as well as the nuclear energy factor um, that we saw being highly dependent on Manila. Um, there's some major, major earthquakes and volcanic activity in that region. Um, so, uh, again, here's kind of the population details uh, for Manila. And then you can see the deforestation is actually very significant there uh, in all throughout the Philippines. Um, and then here's more of the soil map. So this map shows you more of the topology of the whole area. And you can see there's definitely certain areas on the South Island. What basically happens here is that these higher mountainous areas, which are the brighter colors like the red, that is not really farmable, but these certain areas are farmable. And it basically means that this middle island chunk is actually what's going on, is that they're, they've are they kind of farmed out most of this island and most of this island. And now they're going to be farming in the sea, in the ocean, as well as on these islands, basically taking over all that land where this is one of the most important places for wildlife on the planet. Um, and then the geology, you can see, again, there's kind of some footprints here. Um, this helps us really understand that bridge between, it's actually several different types of geology here to kind of help understand how to work with the ocean as well as the biodiversity in the Philippines. So you can kind of see there is kind of a transition point through here maybe, and then even a separate three transitions here and another couple islands here with different kinds of soil and geology. So it would be very important to look at this map um, if you're trying to think about uh, going, traveling around, you'll see very different types of environments as you travel to these. And if you really wanted lots of diversity, you may be looking for certain types of uh, geological diversity as you travel, um, beautiful hills, beautiful mountains, different types of rock. Again, another geological map, um, and you can kind of see I broke that up into a north, south, and then the far south, kind of heading into Indonesia. And then the shipping maps really show uh, a bias here towards the western half as well as in between here 
uh, Davo City, kind of on the northern side of that island. There's quite a lot of boat traffic in there as well as on the fronts here heading into Indonesia. So a lot of this is actually oil traffic um, from Burundi. So there's actually, this is a separate country, this small little country right here um, actually is completely dependent on oil. So um, actually there's a lot of oil traffic through there, which is interesting to think about. And then going back to some of the history of the Philippines in the last 10 or 30 years, you can see 2009 was really a major point as well as the early 2000s kind of things really started to take off around recently. So that's only in the last 10 or 20 years um, that the Philippines has really almost doubled or even tripled their economy. So things have gotten to be really great um, in general. Um, and then this is their export graph and you can see that shows 2009 as well. So sorry, this was the import graph. So this is kind of the imports have also gone up maybe too much, maybe even worse, <clears throat> more consistently. Um, so that shows that the tourism economy is pretty heavily involved <clears throat> on the imports versus exports. And you can see <clears throat> a lot of the imports is actually coming from the United States, <clears throat> Europe, even as far away as Brazil. <clears throat> I probably should have marked that down. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little bit sick today. <clears throat> I'm going to pause this video for a second. Give me one second. Sorry about this. So you'll obviously see a lot of details <clears throat> how important China is. It'll be bright blue on both imports and exports. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So they are trying to make quite a lot of money with China as well as Japan. So that they're very dependent on that as well as Thailand, uh, you can see here and Indonesia. That all should make sense, but essentially Germany here is also a major exporter. They're exporting out to Europe as well. So <clears throat> quite a complicated picture. Um, I was quite surprised how much food they're importing. That should be watched very carefully um, and thought about um, you know, like what they can do to get this essentially down to zero. You should be completely self-sufficient on food. Um, and of course, they're exporting a lot of electronics. So if you are in the electronics industry and you're doing technology of any type, the Philippines is going to be a huge factor in the future, um, making Taiwan look really small. So in fact, all of the Philippines probably will be uh, very vital, um, probably for motherboards, I would think, uh, would be an interesting concept um, for the Philippines. And then here's more of the population structure. I kind of outlined it and looked at some of these details of how you can see population is kind of changing all around the Philippines. And then the farming map, you can kind of see that again on the south side of the islands. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this study. Um, take a look at all these different maps. Uh, try to see how you can make some friends. I was really happy that everyone speaks English in the Philippines. Well, there's still some people in the south parts of the islands and some of these remote islands that speak their own unique language. Uh, but it is a very common language in English. So if you are trying to make friends or work with people in Southeast Asia, the Philippines is an excellent place to start on um, working and making friends with people there. I hope you really enjoyed the study. Uh, there's so many different places around the world to look at. Um, and as you try to um, understand what's going on, um, take, a look, take a look at all of Southeast Asia. And like we began this conversation, um, it is very complicated. There's so many little islands here. This is nothing like mainland area, mainland China, mainland uh, Thailand, Vietnam. It's very complicated uh, in the Philippines, Indonesia, and all even down into Australia. You can see it's basically one large continent, but it's a whole different kind of concept of culture and everything going on here. So um, quite an extraordinary discussion to be having. Um, the fact that we went through uh, so many details here um, can really help you understand what's going on. So you'd have to go through all of these and kind of see, make a plan of who you want to work with or who you want to get to know. Um, and I'm sure you'll have a pretty fun experience. Um, and this is a big part of the Earth's puzzle. Like So understanding this whole region, um, I mean, we have a lot to understand about our planet. Um, but this is one of the more complicated regions to try to understand. So you just kind of went through a whole lot of information, believe it or not. It seems like, oh, yeah, we just studied the Philippines. Um, but we went through hundreds 
of different examples and uh, different kinds of details. So uh, there's just a whole lot of information that we just went through that has never been possible ever in the history of humanity. So uh, I'm really happy to be able to go through this uh, with everybody and kind of look at this. Um, and definitely this soil maps and these are very helpful as well as the deforestation. I would say think about how you can help the wildlife first. Um, that's one thing um, as just to kind of catch up if you're trying to uh, catch up to like the kind of uh, knowledge that I already have of the Southeast Asia. Um, definitely look into the wildlife and the water and the rivers. So not necessarily just the population maps, although the population maps are very helpful to understanding what's going on. Uh, in all of Southeast Asia as a comparative study, seeing, you know, the relative size of different cities and how the population works, um, but definitely looking at the wildlife and how to help people out. Um, so, uh, and as you make friends, you will find uh, there is some poverty in the Philippines. Uh, people may ask you for money um, from time to time. Uh, I get requests on the internet. Um, and I try to be cautious about that and basically look into studying of how I can help in other ways uh, rather than just send money to people that really need help. Uh, but anyway, it's been a fun study and let me know if you got any other questions. Um, I'm probably gonna go into Indonesia next. I already did a couple other studies, uh, but I wanted to kind of conclude with uh, the Philippines here and I hope you've enjoyed the study. Thank you so much. Have a great night.